We invite you to send your questions and remarks on the chat section. After the Congress, we will send all your remarks and answers through email. Continuing with our program, we will have the participation of Dr. Jorge Cordova, Master in Economy and Director of, of Companies ESPO Guayaquil 2015. Biologist by University of Guayaquil, he has a Master in Economy and in Companies Direction. With a long career of more than 30 years working as a businessman in charge of production of shrimp. Likewise, has participated in several publications and conferences at world level. Subject, bioremediation on automatic feeding zones on stream ponds. Okay, good day. First of all, it's for me a privilege and an honor to be invited once again to Kunakwa on this year that has been so difficult and this time with a topic a very interesting topic and that I believe uh, uh, so current so to speak so thank you for the invitation and the topic that has been proposed to talk about is bioremediation and feeding zones it's uh, interesting the fact that some of the ideas that I about to propose and to share should be thought as hypothesis, working hypothesis applied into the field. Let's review some of the things that we are doing to be able to grow shrimp once that the technology, so to speak, reaches the production. And some of the proposals that we have perhaps might be interesting and to be applied soon enough. But let's talk about bioremediation and feeding zones within pounds, production pound of shrimp. And to begin with, let's talk about bioremediation. Bio I want to try to propose to you some definition of what will be the bioremediation as such. And particularly, I will try to focus the concept of bioremediation towards problems associated with the soil of aquaculture of shrimp, which is a little bit the area that is also of interest or we are working. The first concept that I have uh, into your consideration is that proposed by the Real Spanish Academy that says that bioremediation uh, it comes from bioremediation, an uh, English term that uh, also is composed by bio and remediation bio and remediation and define the use of microorganisms to the recovery of the environment or the treatment of certain materials. It's a very wide uh, aspect on the, his original aspect but once again apply to our work which is the shrimp production on pounds and then a term that comes in English at the Mary Webster an English dictionary talks about of bioremediation of the treatment of uh, pollutants or residuals, for example, on, a spo on a oil spell, oil or on contaminated underground water, so pro industrial process with the use of microorganisms, they put it such as bacteria to break down undesirable substances. There is a concept that has to do or that involves the use of organisms and uh, the improve the environment. And a little bit more deep digital due to the Times Wikipedia does this presentation and says by remediation or biological remediation, it defines it as it includes the biological term, it's a biological process that uses microorganisms, fungus, plants, the enzymes derivated of the such to recover an environment that is being altered by contaminants towards the natural conditions. With those bases, so to speak, of uh, the definition of what is bioremediation, the next question that we will have to review is why bioremediation? Well, and for this, we are going to define a bit, or we are going to 
talk a little bit of the environment where we produce the strip. This is a very interesting concept that unfortunately I do not have that reference. It's a little bit old, but talks specifically about the soil of aquaculture, and it says that the soil is the media where you can construct pounds and develop conditions water soil proper for the cultivation of bioaquatic species and the contact of the water and developing those aquaculture practices start to become an aquaculture soil. Similar words are substrate, microhabitat or habitat or basically what we are trying to specify in this concept is that the soil, the aquaculture soil, this combination water mode where the stream leaves, particularly the culture of this species is an environment or a, uh, or a habitat, a highly complex, very dynamic in terms of uh, the metabolism and substances and things that they are happening at, at a time in the place where the stream lives. The stream difference do not use the water column, it's not on the surface. It's in the interface that in the first five, ten centimeters between the soil and the water, a complex environment that that's where we to locate our bioremediation because that's where the, it is leaving the organism that we are trying to grow this case stream. And the second concept that comes hand to hand with this aquaculture soil has to do with what represents the challenge of the environmental of the state of the pond. The natural environment are usually balanced. Nat nature keeps a balance, perfect balance. But a pond, a water pond tank is an ecosystem that favors to the, the balance and other spawns and the added ecosystems where they easily develop microorganisms, potentially pathogens do, that is an environment highly rich on organic materials, on materials of waste. So, that being said, we put the object or and the production organisms in a very complex environment. The soil, the aquaculture, they, is a real challenge for the shrimp and the cultural shrimp. Not just the soil itself, or the aquaculture soil is, is a challenge, but the water column also. This graphic tried to show how, depending on the turbidity that we may have on the water, we may have uh, column of water pools where the photics on the area where there's light and where the oxygen is produced may have a characteristic of uh, amplitude very interested associated to the turbidity or the secchi disc. The literal says that twice the secchi turbidity we have the photics of, of a pound and below that depth we have what is called the aphotic zone. So, to put it an example, a pound that has 35 in centimeters of secades will have 70 centimeters of photic column water and the rest, the other 60 centimeters uh, will be aphotic and the photic characteristic, the absence of light is the one that, determ that put the uh, environment where we are going to grow uh, shrimp in that mud, in that aquaculture soil that we are working. It's not just that the aquaculture soil is highly complex from the point of view of metabolic, it's the place where it's developed the growth, the food consumption, the generation of hisses and different residuals of the same, but it can be complicated by a water column that might be highly aphotic and that have a characteristic and those with tendencies to become anoxic. The place where we have uh, the shrimp is highly complex, but that's not all. Additionally, the, it got complicated when we realized that the soil, the aquaculture soil, that soil where the shrimp lives is also part of his digestive tract because the animals are eating balanced food, but they are also 
ingesting mud. The environmental microbia, the environmental microbia that are in the mud are part of the ecosystem of the digestive tract. And somehow that is what is defined as microbiome. And there is an effect, there is more information explaining how the microbiome uh, has effects over the immune system of the organisms. Uh, facing that, uh, the environment in general, the feeding environment, is a complex topic. And uh, the main business of a production of shrimp is transform raw materials, balanced food and natural food in shrimp biomass. And the faster and bigger, the better. This is just to do the introduction of the topic. This slide tries to show a picture of a stream in a pond where you can see where the mud, in this case, is a part, a very important part or a component, important component of the digestive tract. They are eating mud all day long, so a great part of the aquaculture soil goes through the digestive tract. The quality of the aquaculture soil will affect the growth of the shrimp and the spawns. And the, it's, it's, if I put it at a question, the answer will be yes, it does affect. But all this we have to see that there's a new paradigm or a new way to do things and a new way to cultivate uh, uh, shrimp in America in general. This has to do with the introduction about 10 years ago of feeding, uh, feeding systems, automatized, automatic feeding. Then the, and these systems of, of feeding, uh, they are directed by computers that respond in terms of feeding and function of the activity of feeding that they are um, performing the animals on that pound and, and is based on a hydrophone. And that changes so much nowadays we may have what we call a intensive pulse within a pounds. The feeding areas where there is uh, automatic feeding, they are rounded by a great amount of shrimps uh, raising the mud and bioturbine and raising and put it into suspensions. The aquaculture soil, so the environment is much more complex now. Within a production pound, a new paradigm guide us to work with what we can, intensive zones of, of, of shrimp and um, feeding. Those uh, spaces within the pounds are uh, cumulative zones of uh, different ways and has to be bioremediated. In the particular case of bioremediation, use microorganisms to be able to improve the environment on tanks. We need oxygen, we need aeration. On the traditional tank, we have intensive zones and the pounds with a great amount of shrimp around the feeders. An environment highly complex that demands oxygen oxygen aeration to be able to perform the cleaning of the environment. Once again, with a new paradigm came the demand of uh, carbon to the environment and the different teams of bacteria. This is an example once again, and how do we have areas of feeding and how to work. These feeding zones are contained with pools, and those are areas that we may think probably about 150, 200, 500 shrimp per square meter moving, putting into suspension again that food and feeding and uh, areas that are subject to a great amount of weight every day. There is a work published in 1999 by Aquimeli that nowadays becomes relevant because if it's true, the concept that he wrote in the work before uh, and they were applied 
to pounds or situation of culture on bioflow with aeration and um, adding carbon to the activation of the pertrophic system. Those concepts that he presented in 99 has a lot of application to these feeding areas, to these intensive areas uh, within the tank. Once that we have the new paradigm and the new way of produce stream on those intensive islands around the automatic periods. In 99, he showed that uh, how there is a potential to control the waste of nitrogen waste and organic through the manipulation of what is uh, called the proportion, the ratio carbon nitrogen, and this uh, is explained on his work as a um, potentially uh, beneficial method for the aquaculture. He suggests that the working method is practical and not expensive, and basically has to do with the uh, adding carbon or substances that uh, carbonated material to the production areas to activate the activity or the growth of biomass and heterotrophic bacterial biomass that will eat the ammonia and the inorganic waste of the nitrogen and transform it into bacterial biomass in new protein doing this way possible the recycling of protein. Those concepts and those ideas of Akimele in uh, 99, they are very much applied, or could be applied so much on what's going on nowadays and the potential of bioremediation. And for that, I'm going to present to you two possibilities of bioremediation and a proposal of two co different concepts. In one, is what has been defined for this work, symbiotics, that in this case in particular is writing with M before the B, and that has to be with symbiosis. The symbiosis is a process that is described or explained in biology as such processes, association, or relations among two or groups or organisms that starts to interact. For example, when we stimulate the production of algae that produce oxygen in a tank that is necessary for the therotrophic metabolism and also deliver CO2, when you add the CO2 and recycle protein and benefit that stream of the algae, this can be a way of bioremediation in the tank. In a, after, and after, in another slide, we will show it. And the second the second potential way to do bioremediation has to do with symbiotics, and in this case, I write it with an end because this comes from synergies. Synergies that they are achieved or represent ad additive effects between probioticos and prebioticos generating health and while changing the bioma. For example, when we use a prebiotic pellet with a high ratio of carbon nitrogen, it will induce and will help to bioremediate feeding areas, activating the reproduction of microbial and, and a, a better of bettering of the microbioma. So, uh, improving the areas of the feeding uh, will be improved in symbiotic with M, that has to go through a tank, a production tank, and symbiotic with N, that has to do with synergies that may be achieved. And once they are achieved, the expression of those products with a high ratio of carbon nitrogen may stimulate once again the bacterium activity within the tanks. And we are talking basically of bioremediation of soils. Now, how we do it? What will be the concept to be applied? First of all, when we saw the initial concept of bioremediation, we talk about the use of microorganisms. I put in for you some of the microorganisms that we are using to achieve these effects of bioremediation. And they are basically bacteria of Bactobacillus, yeast, Saccharomyces, algae that are within the pond 
uh, nitrificant bacteria that they are inside the, the tank and develop inside the pond. Lactilos, lactobacillus, phalodrenesis, we are using it as uh, external products. We, uh, we apply it on the feeding areas. The algae and nitrificators are part of the system and we try to promote them, so to speak. But of course, the heterotrophics, they should be considered as part of the tank and as organisms that we will have to try to reproduce. I take this uh, slide from the Department of uh, Environmental of Michigan, Environmental Department of Michigan. They are activated and for the light of the sun, producing oxy oxygen, those algae. The great productors of oxygen are the algae through the photosynthesis. The oxygen that is being produced by the algae is used for bacteria. The bacteria needs those who work with aerobic, they need the oxygen to uh, carry on the processes of breathing, so to speak, and they produce dioxy carbon dioxide, which is used by the algae. This is what does the relationship between those two groups, the organisms, the algae in the superfast and uh, the, the ones that they are in the bottom, the bacteria breathing and the bottom CO2 is what is called a symbiotic cycle with an M. It's a symbiosis among those two groups that is happening in a tank or a pool, in this case, of oxidation. What happened is this concept, we put it into a tank where we have a, a living organism, a stream that is being uh, object of feeding and daily uh, feeding of balanced food, but not just a distribution in the whole pool, but with a new paradigm and a heavy accumulation in certain areas where the shrimp is. It has been proved, it's been written that the feeding of shrimp or the food that is being used, the nitrogen on the protein is recovered and as biomass on the shrimp in a percentage that goes from 25 to 3 percent. There is a high percentage of nitrogen on the protein that is left in the tank. And there's uh, some of the food, balanced food that is not eaten and become waste, so that enriched the bottom of the aquaculture soils for the shrimp. Now, Akimelik and other researchers, when they talk about the topic, they mentioned the application of organic carbon and, of course, aeration with the objective of activate bacteria of the heterotrophic kind to help on the recovery or in the decrease of this product of this inorganic nitrogen and that is transforming new biomass and new protein. Apart from this job of this heterotrophic or the symbiotic within a pool, there is a group of organisms called nitrificators that works and acting, but they are very uh, slow, so to speak, evolve very slowly. All the process, all the process of bacteria and algae is, can be activated fast with the application of substances of organic carbon. The nitrification takes time, but it's going, but it's happening. The ammonia in the pool is being object of use by the algae that help us to bioremedy by bacteria at the bottom that they are activating when we have uh, uh, organic carbon. There's also a component of nitrification, but my way much slower. It takes longer on the culture cycle to gain enough force. It's slower, but at the end of the day, what we have in a pool is uh, uh, adding of metabolic processes and they can be considered in those environment mesotrophic. A way of bioremediate using the symbiotic for one weight, adding carbon, and on the other, the adding also of groups of bacteria to activate the symbiotic cycle. Usually the farms are working with mixtures of bacillus, which are the microorganisms that uh, usually is being used that is widely used, activated with something of nitrogen 
a little bit nine percent of uh, honey is, is produced a fermentation the growth of those bacillus on the aerobic conditions there is a drop on the ph and inhibition of vibrios and these products charge on bacillus and um, and a source of carbon they've been applied to the areas of feeding trying to stimulate the activity the heterotrophic activity and the consumption of the excesses so a way of working that is being used there are variations between what has been on one farm and another but the concept of application of bioremediation using groups of bacteria and carbono sources are very similar to what i'm saying this work at the level of water column that's a variant that has been used in the last year and is the use of certain dust micronized on the rice they call it also bring um, of rice it has to be a product micro dusted maybe in the size of uh, 100 to 100 microns usually the dust might be uh, very it's gross uh, you can grind it you can do it on your farm there are people or companies that sell uh, micronized dust of the rice that might be added to the to the tanks where it's fermented and where you grow bacterial growth and apply to the water transform really those uh, particles of uh, and locals that they are charged of bacteria and they are going to produce an effect over the water column that we have seen that has a lot to do with the develop of algae of diatomes and secondary production to a different scope it's possible to use this concept of carbon and micro and efforts to uh, being able to provide nutrients to the pond and have an environment with a com con the amount of carbon that will help us to level the organic nitrogen and do the bioremediation there is something that has been done um, for about uh, from years ago two three years ago this work and it's going very good those criteria we took them on what has been done on Asia as in production of shrimp and in certain certain application concepts. But the at the end of the day is a source of additional carbon so that can be used on the pre roots and the and the nurseries we have seen this very interesting to work with those very fermented those in the survival of the animals. It helps. It's very common when you use this kind of substances or concepts of bioremediation. See how the quality of the water in terms of life of secondary and primary production, they improve greatly. All process of bioremediation has to be contemplated. And I'm talk about the stream tax on the, 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 from the from the point of view of the oxygen it's necessary that there exist important levels of oxygen that's why the bioremediation have to be used in taking into consideration the weather and the irrigation and days that they are clouds or sunny days and check the levels of carbon with the purpose of bioremediation, it, it could be complicated. You have to be very careful when you do apply this on the feeding zone, taking into consideration the light or not of pellets or the chance to use the aeration where we are pretending to perform the bioremediation. The feeding areas, in this case, must have an influence of ideation. It's very, very important to work uh, combining the uh, amounts of shrimp with an ideation. If you do not do so, the level of oxygen and the capacities of bioremediation decreases very importantly. And the symbiotic kind of work with N, but we tried to make the differentiation before. 
this has to do with the use of some mixture of cultures that they are um, primers and pellets charged with uh, different bio, those probiotics. And those pellets and bioflux can be used for in the consumption for the shrimp. And the, the objective is to bring to the digestive tract a lot, a lot, big amount of probiotics and bacteria. They are beneficial, and not just so, but once that you produce the essence of that material that has a high carbon and nitrogen ratio, and once again it's activated the process uh, of carbon at the bottom. So the, the combined work of the symbiotic to the column of water and this symbiotic with N, we think provide a great result at the time when we think a dynamic bioregulation that is going what that is going on as the shrimp is uh, growing the grain pellets with probiotics and sugars fermented we on the on the farm with high relation of carbon and nitrogen are a second part of the bioregulation that we propose to the feeding zone and accumulation of activity of shrimp and the food so once again, the new paradigm force that nowadays we think a little bit different on the swim culture and tanks. As a matter of fact, the same activity of the shrimp around the feeding areas generates uh, areas where there's a lot of locals and that they come from the resuspension of sediment that is happening. And it's necessary that those areas may have an aeration component and of application of carbon and different bacterial groups to the water and the soil through these pellets to be able to sustain in good condition those environments. It's easy, very easy to observe deviation and problems on the feeding areas when this cannot be done, this dynamic work on the application of remediation, bacterial remediation on the water. We can see as the post harvest and areas that they have a lot of nitrogen and the activity of resuspension they do to the animals, we can see a decrease there. There's a potential accumulation of waste, nitrogen that is not being treated, and this has consequences in terms in the decrease or slow growth, and of course, uh, increment in the conversion factor. On the in the drop of prices that we are having today, the feeding zones good or bad handling may do the difference in the profitability. And this with uh, automatic feeding zone with uh, dropping the prices may generate an utility uh, profit for the farm high, or it can be also a decrease on the profitability. So the bioremediation as concept, we thought as, as a process that is going to help us to improve the ratio conversion to no, better nutrients on the, on the pounds, better health, and act over the microbiome of the animals in, to better the growth and the profitability of the culture. For that, the concepts that I'm proposing are the following up, the symbiotic with M and symbiotic with N being the symbiotic with an empty application of uh, carbon to activate this symbiosis that exists in the ponds between algae and bacteria at the bottom, both of them uh, cons taking con the consumption of nutrition. And the symbiotic with the Synergia probioticus, uh, the microbioma, and the bacteria type that exists in the aquaculture most, as I mentioned, are part of the tra digestive tract of the stream, as in general, to improve the environment and the most that we are having the stream. Both could be used to bioremediate the environment on the pound and the production along the period of the, where we are growing the stream. That could be named a bio dynamic bioremediation, a work that has been done every day along the period of the stream. And finally, a message that it seems interesting I received this morning.
And it says the successful industries adopt early and sustain ahead of the current. Hemel Destin. With this, I finish and thank you once again. It's a real pleasure to be able to be here and be part of Conagua. Thank you so much.